my dad was about to live, was about to build a two type. Really? Yeah, my dad is bigger than you. That's sick, yo. Are there pictures anywhere? Yeah. I want to see that. Whoa, whoa, what the f is that him? That's what I'm trying to tell you. No, <laughs> no. Nah. That's what I'm saying. No. 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 no, for real. My dad bro, for what real. the f oh, Whoa, yeah. this is crazy. Nah, yeah, he's the, yeah. You know how, you know, you know how he's 100% real? He did this. Back in the day. Back in the day when on, no one did this. When they couldn't do this. Money, no one did this. That's why I wanted to. Look at my dad. It's Holy. No, I, wasn't no, nothing steroid, T.R., none bro. of that I'm tripping right now. My daddy, him, natural, real natty. Nah, he's Best on boy. some gear. He was oh, on oh, some gear. I promise my daddy natty. Nah, oh, he's bro, on gear. My daddy natty. <laughs> oh, I'm bro. raising this. Bro. I know all about this. My daddy does how, natural genetics. How much did he weigh? How much did he weigh? Because uh, he looks huge. He was a beast. My daddy like six, five, six, six, three. And what the? Like nah, man, he about 350. Wait, why are you so short? Because my mom is 5'2". Oh, so bro. I just came right in the middle at 5'10". No, 5'10", 5'11". They played you on the high. 6'5"? I got all the other blessings. <laughs> I got five? all the other Mandigo blessings. <laughs> so I'm tripping. And I'm muscular, genetic, strong. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Zeke. <laughs> so, so, wait a second. This right. is, you really I'm for Zeke. He threw me the off with your dad like, well, my daddy the this is in like the is it the 80s what 90s is this? 90s early 90s bro early 90s so how come you're not like massive gym bro what oh I'm, I, I'm very athletic i box i i, I lift weights i weight train. So why are you not a bodybuilder what more specifically because he's a real bodybuilder yeah i well well my daddy was a bodybuilder and a wrestler for me you know what i'm saying um i always I respect it having a a, a, a a massive a muscular physique, but I, I I like to fight a lot and I like to be elusive. I like to yeah. put my arms and I'm I like I'm also into martial arts and ninja and like that. So I feel like to be more agile and the clothes. I, I like fashion. I'm in the street. I'm in a lot of other things outside of physical appearance, and I know I look good enough to get any woman that I <laughs> yeah. want. Regardless, my whole life I've been blessed by the best. To take all of the risk. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. Bro. All right, guys, quick and rough for the podcast. If you guys are questioning what workouts you should be doing every day, I got a solution for you. Go to my site right now, bradleymartin.com. Sign up. There's daily workouts every single day. There's a ton of ebooks. There's a ton of stuff on there for you guys to use. You guys are looking to change your body, change your life, feel better, look better, be stronger, whatever it is. Go to bradleymartin.com. Let's get back into this podcast. Okay, but, so if you had to pick one rapper out of all the rappers to fight, like whatever, if it's not beef or not, it doesn't matter. If it's real, it doesn't matter. Like who would you want to fight? I mean, honestly, like I would fight any rapper. I, it's a few rappers that, that I'm going to spar and box like, you know what I'm saying? If I Actually? Have, I, yeah, yeah, okay. like on camera, like that, or some, I try to fight off camera or we just spar. Like I got gloves. My, my partner, tell you, I came out here with like boxing gloves. Like, you know, I went to the penitentiary and shit like that. So like like I used to like fight dudes your size like every day to for to watch TV and shit like that like you know what I'm saying? How long are you in the pen for? Three years. For what? Um, it's a few different things. Just uh, gang violence, gang violence shit like that. Um, how'd you not get caught up to stay in it? Because most people get caught up and they stay in it. Um, honestly. Um, I'm a person that always just knew both both sides of the spectrum. Um, you know, I, I had the the blessings in life to experience what it's like to live in the sub in the suburbs, but also be born and raised in the ghettos and the 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 the, 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 the crevices of the poverty and slums of America. Like I was born in that, but then I, I also had um, different periods of time where I was able to experience what it's like to live in a Nickelodeon style neighborhood, a Disney feeling style neighborhood. You know <laughs> how, what I'm saying? That, how, that did, how does that happen though? How do you do both? I don't get it. You do both when you have certain family members that have that are more financially fortunate than others. So therefore you might have a mother and a, or a father that lives in the hood or live in the ghetto, but you might have an auntie or an uncle or a Got grandparent. It that made some of the right decisions and they live in a better neighborhood and you may 
your parent may have a good enough relationship with them up until they get themselves into a financial state to move out the hood. They may say, well, I'm going to go have you stay at your auntie or your granny house and I'm going to get you to go to school up under their uh, jurisdiction and the, the neighborhood and the area they in to give you a better opportunity of education and stuff like that. So it's like you have an opportunity. Houston is a very diverse city where yeah. everything is like very mixed. mixed. So I got to see the 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 fruits and the, the abilities of if you do make it to, to be successful and you, you know what I'm saying, make the right decisions to stay free, stay out of jail, and not you just completely throw your life away to the streets and to gang violence and the stuff that's like first nature, not even second nature to, for me and where I came from. It's like, like I said, okay, that's it's possible. Like I was just one of the people who saw these things. Like when we used to be kids and we play bingo with nice cars driving around or we see nice big houses and obviously we from Texas. So like real estate, the real estate margin is way different than California or uh, uh, New York or Florida. So I've always known what it was like to have a big house or see what big houses were, mansions were. So it's like everything always seemed obtainable to me, even though I was from the ghetto. I was from nothing. The It still seemed possible to be accomplished. And my father yeah. was, as you see, my father was a was a very asp uh, inspired man. Like he, yeah. he, he did a lot of great things. He almost made it all the way to the top, but he didn't just, you know, crack through the... Uh, the surface is being like a, a full superstar um athlete entertainer but again i had glimpses in the, in the wrestling space yeah in the, in the like, wrestling yeah. space in the wrestling space football wise he was in the afl for a little like a season you know that that got shut down he used to play for this team called the houston gamblers i don't know if yeah. you're familiar with that league no. but uh yeah that got shut down and he ended up being a security guard like majority of my life my dad was a security guard in clubs and stuff but again like I was able to see both sides of the spectrum and I, and I was able to, you know, make my decision like, okay, I, I love what I'm from and I love what I am and I love my family and, and brothers who share this lifestyle and this 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 mentality and way of thinking, but I gotta, I'm the chosen one that's gonna get us out of this. And I understand it's certain responsibilities and sacrifices that I have to make and, and choices that I have to pick that leads towards the direction of prosperity and staying safe and staying out of jail and not being in the wrong places at the wrong time or constantly constantly indulging myself in the in in, in criminal activity or, or where around criminal activity is constantly going on if I want to achieve my goal, if I really want to achieve, you know, the the status that I that that I that I that I back then I planned to have it, but now I've 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 reached that plateau. And you know, it's just a choice you got to make. It's just something that you have to stand firm on to know that you just you you know you want to just diversify your your destination. Like why, why from do you, where you supposed what people think well, this is where you supposed to end up at, but you take yourself somewhere <clears throat> different. Yeah, so I want to talk about that specifically. Why do you think people end up staying in? Sh they know that they really shouldn't stay in. Like, why do you think they? How do people get stuck in that sort of life? Instead, because um, like obviously, these people always make it out. Mm -hmm. You've made it um, out well, in a sense. Well, you, you. I mean, you got to think about it like this. It's it's 2024. We live in at the peak um, evolution and co uh, merge like the it's is is being uh, uh, added together and put together more than any other time the the use in the the uh, the utilizing this of electronics and uh, you know what I'm saying technology technology yeah. just yeah. period like AI it's just this it's this massive uh, uh, conscious a uh, 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 growth growth right now with technology right but then you still got people that live in the most Aztec mountains and eat food and hunt every day and don't use electronics and still live in teepees and shit like that because systematically this is all they know that this is what they think their life is. They think life is to live as a nomad or a person that's uh, a farmer or some 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 shit like that that's not a rich farmer with a bunch of land, a bunch of acres of land and a bunch of produce and a bunch of chickens and shit that they selling that's making them a bunch of money but you still was born in the farm and gator land and you you live as you know like a, a nomad person. There's struggles and stuff that come with that. 
it's the same thing with being from the being from the, <clears throat> the the ghetto or being from the hood. Yeah, there's there's problems and there's negativity, but there's also the beauty of the struggle as well. It's, it's also a lot of fun. It's also a lot of um, ex excitement, a lot of thrill. Um, you know, the women, the the music, the 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 the, the nostalgia of the hustle of making money through the the avenues that people choose in the streets to make money, that's a that's a rush for people like gambling. I see. You tell some well, a person gamble they they 401k mm -hmm. or gamble what they've accumulated from having this business for 15 years, gamble that away on a, a sport or gamble it on something that's just a bet that that another person will wager for for for, for, for laughs. But to this person, you an idiot. I would never lose my wife or go, yeah. give up the things that I worked so hard and went to college or whatever you did and like to have in the the idea of the hope that I could win on a a chance of choice, but I could lose it all in 30 minutes if the game, if the scoreboard is not what it's supposed to be. And when a person is financially fortunate or is a, a successful businessman, you see somebody that you just knew the other day was doing very well, but now he lost all of his things that he had in his family, he's going through uh, bankruptcy, alimony, wife, all this stuff, but this is all because he has a gambling uh, addiction and a drinking addiction. He's no different than somebody that's from the hood that just love the sh that they come with the streets. It's like, it sounds crazy, but you no, know. No, I understand, I understand. But it seems like people kind of at this point uh, like are always trying to get out, mm -hmm. but end up getting stuck. Yeah. Just because of because of that sort of addiction to that lifestyle, the things that are there, the opportunities that they feel like they could benefit from. Yeah, and it's I mean you know it's also the illusion, and with, I mean it has a reality to it, but it, it's the, it's a it, again the reality is is good and bad. But again, it's a big illusion that if you are a person that's able to be be a somebody in a world full of nobodies and um have the ability to convert over from just being a broke person that we see every day in the hood that shares the same struggles as us to now you have money or, and you have opportunities and you have power when people and people see you still chose to be in the hood and be around these surroundings but you have more than us you in a different tax bracket or just different financial status stance um point than everybody else when they see you still choose to be in the hood and be in the ghetto, that's like a glory. That's like a Viking or something going to kill a dragon and come back to the <laughs> with the head that would pull up to the <laughs> castle. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when 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 you able to do that, it's just a different type of inspiration and, and motivation that fuels the people that's in the hoods. And like, okay, I could be the biggest D boy from down the block and come back in a in a big Cutlass Supreme or Escalade Cadillac or I could be the kid that could have been a hustler, but then I ended up being a football player, basketball player, as a professional athlete, and I choose to periodically come back here and there and help and rehabilitate and buy. Or I could be the person that goes to be a lawyer or a doctor or a police officer, a real estate agent. But those options and our everyday reality, those are the least feasible, least r realistic choices for most people because m most of those job descriptions and choices, they take a lot of support from family and, and friends and systems and you know what I mean? Like it takes a lot of support to take your, 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 your health right and your athleticism right and your training right if you want to choose to be an athlete or to take your studies right, have the right books, have the right teachers, have the right, um, you know, just different uh, events or, you know, workshops that your parents put you in with different people of expertise that know these different skill sets that will make a person more sufficient or efficient rather uh, in making business choices outside of the normal people that they, that, that people think is possible. That's like, like that's, it seems like so grasp it's such a grasp for everyday people is not, you know, in reality, like, you know what I'm saying? You saying in the, in those certain communities, yeah, in those communities, like <clears throat> middle America down, but really like you know, the bottom, the start of middle America and down, yeah, and you know like with inflation and the way 
doing right now. Bro, like, what the f- ain't even money that it used to be anymore. Not even that? close. Not exactly. I try, when I try to tell people that, they think I'd be like, bullshit, you know, like exaggerating or that. They like, I think I'm like on the high horse or something. Like I had made a, 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 a tweet once and it went viral like on Say Cheese TV and the uh, Shade Room and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And I was like, um, a, a million dollars is now the new hundred thousand dollars. If you think that you have a hundred thousand dollars and you rich or doing well, you got another thing coming. You're not even close. Because in reality, like the value, yes, you can change your life with a million dollars, and you can do immense of great things with a well, million. A million dollars. pretty much equals like six hundred thousand. Right. So- just so, so everyone's clear on that. It, it, thank yeah. you. And that's the part that nobody wants to like acknowledge. <clears throat> yeah. Like when, once you make a couple investments, have a little fun, take care of some other people's hardships in their life that you love, mother, cousin, brother. That's gone. I know. I've been there. We I've are. been there. My first million was like, I was like, I looked around, I was like, what the f- I'm broke? Where, <laughs> exactly. I, Yo. Like, I could really have a million and go back to 20,000? This yeah. is possible? Yeah. And then this, but everybody's still looking at you like. Yeah. 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 And you have to, and it's it's weird. I was just talking to my mom about this the other day. It's like, it, you have to keep making more. It's almost like you feel like you have to keep making more. Otherwise, like, right. the, the expenses. Not even, and I, I never even lived a life that was like <clears throat> crazy as far as like having a bunch of random. Like, I never even spent money crazy. Mm-hmm. And I still look and I'm like, yo, what the, f-? like every, especially right now, everything is just cost so much. Like California, I don't know if it's a specific California, LA thing, but it's just, it's insane right now, man. Life's no, crazy. No. I don't know how people are surviving in LA. Right. I'm like they must have like four or five people in a f-ing house, like a three well, bedroom. Know, it's, it's some magical money fountain mountain or something in between these California hills that's just producing the infinite amount of cash flow in, the, in I California, know, I get like. Yo, I had a question about you and money. I saw you did a you interview with AK. You were talking about owning publishing. Yes. Why, why do you think like most, like how, how okay, for example, mm-hmm. T-Pain got on talking about he makes more money streaming social media era than he ever made from music. Mm-hmm. How, like how the f- does that even happen? It's just people are just taking so much from the back end from these artists that they're just like, or they're just signing really, deals or they're taking millions up front and earning like owning nothing of their actual music like how does someone like t-pain was massive okay well for number one it's 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 two equations that go into that but for number one funding artists needing funding is the first you know what i'm saying infraction that's ruined a lot of um artists legacies further down in their careers as far as like having financial stability when things get shaky or things slow down um, and that's being, being, is it that again, people, especially like hip hop artists, when the, the idea that you have of becoming a hip hop artist, a signed professional hip hop artist, rather that when you think, okay, I get signed to a major record label. And also you have to equate that this is in a time period before streaming was streaming yeah, before the internet that it is today was not the internet that it was then and so therefore it's a whole bunch of different ways that the artists get paid now to give artists more power that they also didn't have prior to so i i have to give them that on their behalf as well i still wouldn't have made the decisions that those artists made back then but what just, decisions were they making do you think that ended in those being signed to major labels instead of being independent <clears throat> i've been independent i've been an independent artist for 10 years i just now got to a point where i started working with major labels but it's but it's nothing wrong with my working with major labels. But we can get back to that point of the conversation yeah, yeah. later. But um, the reason why they do it is because when you compare being a rap artist to a, a, a professional athlete, and you think I'm signing to a, a, a Fortune 500 major multi million dollar company, when I sign to you to give you some projects of music, I'm feeling my mind and heart. I'm supposed to get millions of dollars right now, or I'm supposed to get at least high level six figures for each installment album that I give you. Therefore, giving me a million dollars at the, uh, millions of dollars at the end because you feel like that's what I'm signing to a record like before. But in reality, especially in the prior times in music, when you sign to record labels to get those millions of dollars, you have to sell all the equity and all the the back end finances that pays you out as a company for from a company standpoint. 
it's basically like you selling your company to a private equity firm way before you scaled as a company just because of you have good projected numbers. You have some good projected numbers, so before you scale to the point to where you're going to get your true 10 next value evaluation when you sell, you sold it right when you had your first Okay. So, you, you know, so if, a, if, break, if, a, if a record label sees you as an artist back in those days, get to a point where you make 300000 okay, we'll give you a $2 million record deal, but this $2 million record deal just ate up the next $14 million that you make over the next seven years. Uh uh well, not even not even monthly. one for, not even one for one it's like you have to pay all that back essentially yes it's a huge loan it's a huge so you get what four million what, what was the number four three million yeah well, three million and you gotta pay million. back four million or 14 no, million? no 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 so let's say you get a three million dollar deal right yeah okay you get a three million dollar deal let's say 1.5 of that is an advance or 1.5 is for marketing and stuff like that yeah. Okay. So the one point five that they give to you to go in your pocket, you got your lawyer expenses, all the expenses of whatever you had to get that deal accomplished. Then now you get your money. Yeah. Okay. So that money is for you to live off of and manage and stretch out until you recoup whatever the amount of money that you uh at rack up from the record label investing into you. So, but this is your personal side of the money. Then it's another one point five, which is there. That's their uh that's their ceiling where they know we're not gonna go over this budget. This is what we're gonna stay within this this in this range of not to for spend this over artist. three million for this particular artist. Okay. So we don't go in the red on the document, on the contract. But nine times out of ten, be, when you start up using this career and start using the um the record label services, you're gonna exceed that uh record label budget by, by far. Uh and you already signed within the three million dollar amount, so you might do half of that deal. You drop two of the albums; they're doing kind of well. We could project the numbers and see it's gonna kind of come back, but it might not come back. But we'll give you another advance right now, but we still adding on another marketing advance. So therefore, you get another five hundred thousand, another three hundred thousand. That five hundred and three hundred thousand, that's another million that you owe back. Holy, you know what I'm saying? That's a crazy business. It, it's yeah. that is a finesse dude it's super finesse because what the f it's the worst loan in the world and then you also have to think about it like this from a business standpoint especially when you're selling like products you have a you have assembly line of products like you your physical body doesn't have to be there to make money so that's why usually if you do sell a piece of, a portion of your business to a, a, a an investment firm or, or a private equity fund or, or whatever a bank whoever it is that you get the funds from you can appoint managers, CEO, COO, product managers, different people in place, or you can work it from the phone. You could, like, we, we talking about back at T-Pain Day, like, before you, you yeah. can do everything on uh, computers and shit. So you still making money even if you're not present because you have a product that's being sold. Right. You have, uh, uh, maybe you have a, a brick and mortar place that people going into and buying things, either whether it's getting sent in by order or they walking up. As an artist, if you sold all of your estate to a company for an advance and you have yet to recoup those investments, then now you only make money when your physical body is present. So therefore, that means when you want to spend time with the family, you can't spend time with the family because that's stopping you from making. You have to tour. and You, you have to physically be Damn, present baby. to shake hands. And It's like when a, 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 a wrestler or an athlete or a movie star goes on a promo run and they signing autographs or they sitting doing interviews or a park or, or whatever, or making appearances, they're more or less making appearances to promote this movie or the sport that they're doing. When you're a rap artist, you're making appearances to get paid and to survive because you sold the money that's getting made off of your movie they're streaming. Will Smith is still making money off of every syndicated yes. TV movie episode that he has around the world. Fresh Prince of Bel Air is still making him new dollars in 2024 yeah. that it was making in 1994. That's not the same situation for most rappers that make bad business decisions. So therefore, or they needed a lot of funding in the beginning. Yeah. So that's why a person like T Pain is saying, "I'm sitting in my house on the couch streaming, making two hundred thousand dollars. I used to have to travel seventeen dates across the country or twelve dates across the country to see two hundred thousand dollars profit." Yeah. 
It's that's a that's a it's just a crazy business. It is the the fact it's that it's lucrative still. But if you if you understand, you know. Now, now it's like selling different products to yourself, but yeah, now music is the business too. You should make money off of music, not just performing well, there's a lot, it. Yeah, well, that's because there is a lot of money being made off the music, Huge. like a time. Huge. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, now obviously it's way different with the ability to like monetize and make products. That's and, what's giving the artists more power and streaming the, the internet and social media, period. Apps, yeah. period. Yeah. Applications. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's changed everything dramatically. Um, what what other sort of businesses things do you do? Yeah, I'm like a serial entrepreneur, man. Um, I've done a lot of businesses. Um, I got what is the most successful outside of rap? OnlyFans. <laughs> what do you do on there? What do you do on there? Bro. <laughs> Manage nah, nah, and nah, damage. Nah, nah. Don't don't Manage and damage. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait. I like a, a lot of bands are a lot, a lot of bands off of OnlyFans, but I got a lot of other businesses that, that I own as well too. I got like by seven, six or seven LLCs. Wait, you actually do that? You actually do that? Yeah, I made ten million dollars off OnlyFans. Yeah, but like, what are you doing on doing COVID? Same thing that I do with women. No, bro, you taking bathroom photos? Nah, 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 nah. I ain't no there modeling and displaying. I'm slaying. Are you really? I'm, I ain't out of this plan. I'm slaying. You see what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of men out here in this world. <laughs> hey, I can't tell you trolling. Money. There's a lot of men in this world that give their money to these girls. I'm one of the men in the world that girls pay to get trained for my personal gain. Wait, wait. Because I was wait. born with a gain. Wait. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wait, you're dead serious, huh? So serious. Oh, my God. That's, you know, that's funny. Yeah, man. So, wait, know. wait, wait. So... Okay, obviously you have your OnlyFans, you get paid. So you just said, do and I manage, I've managed models as well. Okay, mm -hmm. I've done that too. But all right then, yeah, yeah. So you get it, yeah, I get it. But but so so you get people, you get other OnlyFans girls to pay you to like make videos with them. Or, yes, for or, me to feature. Or you pay them. I no, no cap other way around. I'm the I'm I'm the guy. I'm the guy that girls pay for slay. You my know. whole life. You ask about when you swear, when, like you're not. When you, when you're not you just dive, trying to sound cool. When you dive into who I am, I'm not just trying to sound cool. Oh no, nah, man, I'm okay. really the the drip god. Like <laughs> How you I'm the kid. With that? I'm the kid that I did. Let boots. me tell you about it. Louis Vuitton snow boots because I'm looking for snow troops. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, I'm looking for the bunny with the money that ain't uh, being funny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm smashing and splashing and asking lie. for her cashing. You know what I'm I, talking I about? Love, the kid that did, not the kid that didn't. The reason why the sauce word was written, I'm all about the pimping. You know. <laughs> no, did. shut the f up. Yes, this no, is true. No, shut up, shut up. I'm not buying that bullshit. He said, this guy days. right here said, man. some chick gave you 10 grand, cra 10 grand cash to go to the movie. Yes, what movie, though? Multiple times, yes. Multiple times. Just to go watch the movie and chill with her. Like, it's just a, just a random chick. Yeah. Like I wanna, like I wanna. Okay, think about it like this. What movie? What was the first movie? The first, first movie that a girl ever paid me to go watch with her. Yeah. This is <laughs> hilarious. First movie. There. Um, um. What means? Uh, Sam had went to go watch that movie. Oh shit. Like how long ago was this? COVID time. No, this was before COVID. When you oh. talk, when you talking about girls paying me to take them to movies, man, this is way okay. before COVID nineteen. You know, what <laughs> yes. I'm saying? I've been getting paid to be handsome. No, you, when no. you handsome, when you're handsome, she will pay the ransom. <laughs> but you, girls no, nowadays I'm, don't want to pay, bro. Until they meet an alpha male that understands yeah. his value, like a woman understands hers. Oh my god, dude, they don't want to pay these days. They you ain't plan. paying you to go to movies, bro. You crazy? Nah. Yeah. When's the last time for, they gonna pay for my yesterday? <laughs> Shut the f up, bro. I'm You're to so capping. All right. Nah, when, you, when this video yo. drop, when this video <laughs> drop, the comments are going to inform you who I bro, am bro. and what I have accomplished. <laughs> Yesterday, what movie? No, 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 no. Yesterday, I just got paid for some other things that she oh, just okay. wanted. You know, conversation. You know, I'm kind of like a life coach in, in, a, in, a, in a concubine. I'm well, kind of like life a, coach. You're like, this is what you do to get rich. Here's my dick. Is that what you do? Type. Tell what you Because <laughs> girls do it why I can't. Bro. Girls do it why I can't. I know the value of myself. It, and it's a lot of men out here who just share themselves with anybody. I don't share myself with anybody. I share myself with the women that are deserving. <laughs> Real.
Okay. I'm not training this hard. He's like, look here, you go to the gym every day, you lifting all this hard ass mother weight, you're stressing, yeah. your eyes popping out, you mother died and right, you trying to get your abs and your triceps and <laughs> shoulder blades to be all structured and shit. And then you gotta go buy creatine and all this to make your spleen. And then you have to perform in the bed. Just what people don't think about this too is, is men in the world with sex. Like, you ever thought about like, like, now, you got two different types of men. You have men that suck and have no sexual performance. You have men that's really that. But when you a man that's really that and you actually making a, it's a, work. a statement, it's work. Yeah. She's not doing anything. She is getting pleasure. She's laying on her back and just enjoying the ride. <laughs> I'm the roller coaster. I never seen Astroworld or Six Flags pay you to come there. <laughs> you gotta pay to ride this roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead serious, for real. Yeah. It's, so hey, you're a it's prostitute. Hard to have endurance. So you're it's a prostitute. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's no, 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 no. But she can buy. Dude, you're hilarious. But she can buy. She can buy because I'm, I'm not free. You know what I'm saying? Because as a man, as I respect a, it. I respect it. As a man, you understand? Know it's the thing about this. It's so many men that's out here getting tricked for the stick. I don't want to be with those guys. You're different. Because in, re in reality, these women don't even like these guys. They look at these guys as a sponsor. Oh, man. It's I don't want to be a sponsor. I don't want to be the guy that the girls laugh about when they sit in the corner like, yeah, girl, he thinks he's this and that. Man, I just want him to give me some new shoes and take me out to dinner because I can't afford nothing but Jack in the Box. <laughs> but this guy right here with these big shoulders and this nice suit is going to fly me to Jamaica because I have on a Walmart dress and my <laughs> booty's nice and my thighs are snow. I'm not that, bro, because why? I had beautiful girls and nice looking women when I was in my middle school and high school. I was, we, I was it's having the- for you. The most beautiful, the girls that the jocks had and the, the star quarterback had, we had those girls, man. <laughs> they couldn't get them back from us. So when that we get become men, when did it turn that as a man, I have to pay for the same thing you was giving us in high school <laughs> and in college? When did it change? Oh, that's what's going down. I'm not with those guys. You did No, baby. Matter of fact, that's what you're doing. That's, that's how I go. I'm gonna do that too. Matter of fact, let's get my investment fund going. I got some dreams and things that I wanna do. How about let's all get together and make our own private equity firm? Go buy some commercial residential real estate, take pictures. <laughs> Yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, quick and orange for the podcast. This pod is sponsored by BetterHelp. I've talked about this, but it is never not a important thing to talk about. Mental health, a lot of us, obviously get input from people around us, people in our circle, people who a lot of the times are somewhat biased on our situations or on what's happening with us because of their relationship to us. But BetterHelp is a platform. It allows you to speak directly to someone about what's going on in your life uh, that's not going to have biases. It's super simple to use. You don't need to drive to go see you know, a therapist somewhere. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. I strongly recommend if you've ever thought about talking or looking to talk to someone or trying to get advice or just, again, a different perspective on whatever you're trying to figure out, then your existing circle is always going to help you, whether you figure it out the first time or it gives you some sort of nugget of information or wisdom to continue on and like just get past whatever you're trying to get past. It's really helpful. Go to betterhelp.com. That's better, H-E-L-P.com slash raw talk to get 10% off your first month right now again let's get back into this podcast but aside so, of that i sell boats um i have boats yeah i sell boats yeah i have a, a company called potenza watercraft i sell i make like futuristic yachts and um you know the jet cars that, that people drive the ones that look like lamborghinis and Lambos, oh on the water on the water yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah i own a manufacturing company for that in florida oh, that's, that's how i met my uh business partner ryan out here i was trying to Get him to invest into that company that I have going out in Florida in Brickell. And uh we end up just like getting real close and kicking it off on like other business investments and stuff. Yeah. And um I'm right now I'm getting into like sports uh equipment, like rehabilitation devices and stuff to like help athletes heal and like cause like it's not even just athletes entertainers. I I'm I'm in I'm in, I have my own water. I have my own water, uh alkaline water with exotic pop. It's called uh sauce water. Um I got a lot of different products, bro. I have Sauce my own water. studio. I have two different studios. In LA? 
No, I have uh, one studio in Houston, Texas, the Sauce Factory studio. Right. I have a, one in Houston. I have another one in um, uh, Miami and Brickell. Um, How do you manage to- all of it? Obviously, it's not just you. Yeah, I, I own a corporation, yeah. TSF, the Sauce Factory, the Sauce Familia. I own like a whole incorporated business. You hire managers like Yeah, that. I got managers, product yeah. managers. Uh, <clears throat> uh I got a whole staff, a whole back office. How do you know? How do you know when you have a good partner? Because it's like there's. I've been in situations where I'm like, oh, so many times I've been f- over. How do you know? Like, what's your cue? Mm, well, for number one, it's like you have to find out what attributes do a person have, and then what are their personal true goals and intents for themselves, and then see. You have to test people. You have to put people through a series of tests to like see and. Like, what is their breaking point? Um, what is the point that will uh, pull out their true characteristics when nobody is looking? Yeah. Is this a person that will steal if I don't give them something every time they ask for it? Is this the person that will start treating me differently and ungenuinely now because they feel that we have a disagreement or because I may have a task or a job for them that I believe that we should do that they might not agree with, but I may have a little more say so in the situation, or even if it's a situation where I may not have the more say so, but I'm just trying, I'm trying to uh, experiment with something, and I just need your support. As a, or I'm trying to give you the opportunity to be a part of this experiment that could grow to be something big, and then you give a bunch of negativity, or a bunch of hatred, or a bunch of rebuttal or pushback instead of trying to figure it out with me but still being honest still not being a yes man i don't a yes man at all or women you know what i'm saying but um or like putting people in in in, in, in situations where you see that um are you able to take constructive criticism or discipline with being within my company like the thing i was telling you about off camera that i respect you about how you was able to have that physical confrontation with um, which whatever the Paul guys Logan, Logan. Yeah. yeah yeah with Logan, but uh, how you was able to do that as men and still have mm-hmm. a mutual conversation after the fact, and everything is not to be um dealt with through uh, violence or physical altercations, but yeah. just knowing that maybe we may have to have an aggressive conversation that don't get physical or it's like I I come from Texas, I'm from a place where people don't mind uh hashing out their issues verbally or physically, but still getting back to whatever our original goal and plan was. Yeah. So I just merged that with my business uh, module and like, okay, if for, for if I'm, cause if I don't, I don't believe in the same when people say business is uh, not personal, uh, never keep it, don't do keep it personal or family. Bi- I forgot what it is, but I don't believe in that. I believe you should only do business with people that you consider family. I believe that family, like like a lot of people say that blood makes you family. No, family is about relationships, not by blood and DNA. It's about who you relate to. <clears throat> Which blood and DNA, of course, we're not idiots yeah. here, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah. The relationships and the things that you can conquer and the knowledge that you can get and the just the accomplishments and experiences that you can make with people that have like minds as you or that inspire to do something that you're doing or vice versa. And then we could go out and go on missions together and take risk and chances together to achieve. You end up spending more time with those people than you spend with your family because we're trying to accomplish something to take care of our families. So, but then that other element comes in where when it gets, uh, what is it? Uh, dog eat dog, or it gets to <clears throat> you over me, or your family over my family because something uh, weird or you know uh, some a fork is coming the road in the business. Now you thinking about your personal interests over your partner's personal interests because you don't look at that person as family. It's just like a woman that's in a relationship with a man and then she has a, a, a manager at a job that's her boss. Your boss will uh, uh, correct you or put you in your place or tell you don't do this or you gonna get fired and not come back and you gonna yes sir no ma'am and whoop and I do that but then your husband that you love every day will tell you the same indifference that you a woman to fight and go against him because you your 
connection with this person and your sense of value with this person is only emotional. It's, it has nothing to do with the the logistics of stability and taking care of your kids or remaining in um in good status in good state with with the business that y'all have accumulated and, and bring together by even if y'all just a system of he's the hardworking man that makes the money but you keep the 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 the, uh, the family straight you keep the finances in order you do deal with the taxes and the CPA and stuff like that they deal with the wife whatever it is it's the teamwork that makes the dream work and a lot of people uh lose out on that by trying to do business with people that they only look at as business. So then when they get real, you sl- I hate this word, but you slime them out. You backdoor them. The person that you was I see what good to you. But if we's family, <clears throat> it's like even when we doing business, I still thinking about your kids. I'm thinking about your people, your brothers, people that I became friends with from us doing business. So it's now my intentions is pure. Everybody intentions is pure because we have a family part with- I think I think sorry, interrupted. I, I think it's also different nowadays, just because, and also maybe specifically in what you do and mm-hmm. what, even what I do, mm-hmm. it's it's way harder to have that same sentiment of like not mixing what you were saying was like not mixing business and friendship. Right, right, right. Because it's not the same sort of business. It's very like it moves way differently. It's not like I own a massive company and I'm not going to hire someone who's a friend or something. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the goal is to own a giant company, but the spaces that we're in and, and social media mm. to get there, right? Like for example, I have a videographer and an editor. I'm, I'm going to spend Clippers so, and so much of my time with those people. Mm-hmm. It is hard to avoid a friendship. Exactly. And, and, and yeah, I see what you're saying. Like you'd want someone that is going to be able to be in a position when it gets tough to still care just as much as you about something. Right. So it is, it's just like way, there's just, I, I understand what you're, you're getting at. It's just like a different time. So like, I think for us, it's probably harder to, create something to like that degree to grow a business mm-hmm. without creating real friendships. Right. But it, it can get f-ed up, man. Like I, I've got, man, I got stories of people who had nothing, worked with me for eight years and did me dirty. So dirty people that I thought were family. Right. And right. it's just like, <clears throat> how the f- do you spot that before it, before it f-ed you? Okay. Okay. See, a oh, quote I wanted to say within that, what you're saying was for number one, your network, is what creates your net worth. Okay, so did you just say your neck work? Your no, your network. Because that was oh really pause. The only thing that's hey, fucking yo, me up. pause. Hey okay. yo, <clears throat> yeah, that was crazy. My bad. I, let me stop because <laughs> I'm gonna say something crazy <laughs> yeah, to get yeah, me in trouble. Yeah, I don't want to get yeah. canceled. I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> but deep in the heart of Texas, you know, just deep in the heart of Texas. <laughs> got you, got you. Oh law. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the way that you network. Network. Yeah, the got way it. that you network. You know, gotcha. I, I got a million dollars of diamonds in my mouth. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to talk. My lips get chipped. Yeah, gotcha. But uh, uh, your network determines your net worth. And um, when you bring a conglomerate of people around you, and this, it falls up under the category of entrepreneurs and entertainers, small business. But before I say that, entertainers, and like content creators, but it's really just small business owners, period. Yeah. Because think about it, before you incorporate, before you go massive distribution, before you go any of that, when you start your business off, the people that you hire and give positions, they have to be in your personal space as far as where you live at. They have to know where the storage units are. They have to know where the product is being held and being manufactured at. And you have to, if you don't test the character, because you think about it like this, Obviously, you want to savings as matters with business, right? Yeah. If you have a better relationship with a person, then we could create a better line of credit between each other with payments and savings on how we do things, period. How we pay each other, what we spend on. Maybe I can offer you some percentage and you can start investing some of the money you making back or go get assets. When you do it straight by the regular book, those things are kind of out the water. So, therefore, when a person's working with you and you're not putting them through tests or giving them opportunities, then they create that that hatred, that idle devil's time, but still being in your business. So where they're like, okay, well, how can I fuck over this person, but I'm still here now? Because now I got to What if you hit. gave someone all those opportunities and he still fucked you over? But see, wait, okay, boom. That's what <clears throat> kick ass come in. Before that, signs. When, when you have a kick ass relationship, like see, where I'm from, like even if you're a construction worker or if you cut grass, like your boss and the employee will fight with their hands when I see you not respecting the way that we all trying to get this job done as men. 
So if I sense or see, or if you're a woman, I'm going to have a certain type of conversation with you. And if you are disrespected or outright with me, I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to do nothing to you. I'm going to let my sister or somebody, <laughs> a woman that I know be, because it's, it's just like your child or a child that you love. A child will go play with a spider or a venomous animal or go put their hand in fire, jump in the pool, and don't know how to swim until they realize that water will drown you, fire will burn you, and an animal can bite you. Yeah. So if you, yeah, I, I, I understand that we're living in a new world of peace and happiness and harmony and equality and all that bullshit. That's fine. <laughs> I, love, I love this. Yeah, but real, the reality is the, in the, human, real the human body learns from experience. <clears throat> Yeah. So if I share ex an experience with you that I'm not going to tolerate certain things within our friendship and I'm willing to have a physical or verbal uncomfortable, I'm okay with going through the uncomfortable moment with you as my business partner, as my friend, as my if or whoever you are in my life. I'm willing to go early at the early stage because no, what people do wrong and I and I hate to point this, the, 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 the guilty stick at you, but you saw the signs. We all see the signs. Yeah. So when you and, and that's what the divine cognitive energy of the universe gives us, or whatever your religion is, it gives you the intuition to feel the sign. So when you feel that sign, you are supposed to react to that sign. Just like when you lifting weights and you feel that, oh, okay, I'm finna max out, or I'm finna go to to. I only got my last four reps. I'm finna push, but I'm also gonna respect my body because I feel the sign that I'm pressuring out, I'm maxing out, okay? When I see those signs and those persons, we addressing it immediately. Let's have this conversation. And, and, and then this is also, again, go back to what we were talking about earlier. Now we're going through the pressure levels of test. How are you going to react to this? How are you going to conversate body language? What, or who are you going to tell after we have this? And you might pass this test of, 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 of us talking about it and mediating, but you might leave and go tell other people our business is not posting on our business. Or you might tell other people, and that sign tells you, okay, now I can't, you can't see me sick, or you can't see me down bad, or you can't see me uh, emotionally stressed out or distraught while we're doing business. Because you will go tell my business to other people that, oh man, I seen Brian over there in the house and he was on, and then <laughs> you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I get you. That's the sign you supposed to pick up on that from the other situation. Oh, you talk too much. That's the you talk too much sign. Yeah. Oh, this is the you steal sign. Oh, this is the you exaggerate on the numbers of business or what we trying to do sign. And when you find those things, you it's your choice as the leader of this situation because you are the alpha in your universe. You are the center of your universe. It's your decide. It's your choice to say, okay, I'm gonna either cut you off or I am going to help you and teach you. Through um, tough love or through um, understanding why this is wrong or why we not own it or why we not doing it. And I'm willing to go to these different levels of, of confrontation or confusion or just gaining understanding with you to show that we and, – and, and that could be done to me as well. Yeah, You, you have to be transferred and have that on both sides. You can't just be the – dictator and conqueror and then when you do some bullshit or some ho shit, you can't get addressed either that's 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 not a true kingdom or a true king or, or a brother or a family member however yeah. you want to be or whatever ceo people who gonna live and die and go do whatever for they the, the companies that they live and they ceos the ones that understand us as a family give us benefits send cars out uh go to the retreats and then we might have where we can argue in the back and this happened and you come tell the boss, I might tell you, you leave for two days and you leave for two days, but y'all are still my guys. I'm not finna fire y'all. We could come back and talk. It, it, those type of experiences, because you got to think about it too. When people do to you, they go to their crew. They go to their family. They go to their immediate love. So that's why I say the family matters. Because if I have a relationship with your uncle, granddaddy, cousin, and you trying to do some hope to me, your granddaddy or somebody that you love gonna correct you. Man, don't do that to Brian. Why would you do that to Brian when you know we got all this going on and woo do woo do whoop and you know what I'm yeah. saying? And you should. It's that's where accountability falls at. Everybody supposed to have some people. You a ass person. You a person. If you don't have people around you that you love and trust that know you, no matter whatever going in life financially, if all it go away, these particular people are gonna be around me. These people are gonna have accountability for me as a person. They should. Yeah. If a person don't have accountability, you have nothing to be aware is to be alive. If you ain't aware, you ain't even, that's how you get hit by a car. 
So um, you take people through those series of events and soon you give a person two to three chances. And each chance, the penalty is worse than the last one. And if we have to go this far, then it's unhealthy for us to be around each other. And nine times out of ten, I'm going to save my ass from getting fucked over financially or or it or because you know how I am and I react to certain now you when you thinking that whole move, you're gonna also think, man, let me go ahead and try to talk to him about how I could do it this way. And I'm gonna tell him, bro, I really was down there feeling this way about this and then I then it was and then you get to see, oh, you giving me humidity now. And you would have crossed me, but my actions and my leadership has influenced you to say, make a it, it, it made you change the decision making and characteristics of your prior self before me and you became friends right. and family. And that is the testaments of a true leader and a true king. And I possess those. And obviously you're a person that do too, but none of us is perfect where we're not going to get uh, damaged or get hurt. Or Heavy is the shoulders of the king who wears the crown. That's a fact. Had you Had you always looked at these situations like this, like throughout your career and throughout your business stuff? Or is it just kind of like it's life? You just learned it over time, man. I've 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 I've, I've lived many lives. Did anyone this. really teach you? Like, do you have any people that you really look to? Honestly, the streets, hip hop, my dad, and anime like Goku and. Oh, you're an anime. Look I'm at that. anime god. Let's go. You can't fuck with me with this, and nobody uh, has. More. I'm anime lore. Really? I'm like anime Jesus. Like, <laughs> I thought you were drip god. I am drip god. Okay, I, which but one I'm is Sauce it? Sauce Goku. I'm Sasuke. <laughs> oh, my God. my name is Sasuke <laughs> Uchiha. Oh my God. Sasuke Drip Chiha. Have you been to Japan? I have an artist from Hiroshima, Japan. Sauce White. Shout out Sauce White. My artist TSF Business. I have. All the signs to me from all around the country. Bro, Japan is the dopest place. I can't wait to go there. It's the greatest place, man. Let me man. show this man, man. Hold on. You really about that life? What the? Yeah, this is cool. If you know, okay. you tell me who it is. Wait, wait, what? what? Hold on. Oh, right, right here, right here. Yeah. Right here. Who is that? Perfect. This, wait. This. Perfect sale. Yep. And. Wait, who the fuck is this? Aoki. From One Piece. Didn't you really have the tatted on you? Uh, Kim how, now, how long have you had this? Is this new? Because like anime is, is cooler now? Nah, my whole life. You're not a trendy I, I, guy? I'm, I'm 90s tattoos. I got Spawn and Zack the Black Power Ranger. Uh, Cyborg from uh, Teen Titans. You really? I'm uh, uh, Afro Samurai. Man, I do this. Wolverine. Well, you're like... You're like you're I'm actually, pop culture. No, I was going to say, you're really like versatile. It's Extremely. It's crazy. I'm a martial artist. I'm, I'm not a use the nunchucks, the samurai. Uh, I mean, excuse me, the katana blades, uh, shurikens. What got, you, what got you into all that shit? At least anime stuff. Um, I mean, you're like basically my age. So we're the same genre. Yeah, I'm 34 same. years old. Yeah, same. All right. Yeah, so um, you know what I'm saying? I'm, from, I'm a 90s baby. So uh, I was born in the, you know, the, the in my Opinion. That was straight dragon. The epitome, yeah. the epitome of just pop culture is the '90s to me. So um, I say that uh, when you from the hood and you from the streets and the struggle and the, the, the my, my mother was a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? My mother was a crack addict and an exotic dancer too. So like, like I said, I lived a lot of lives very young. My daddy an athlete. My mama a drug addict and a stripper and pretty as hell. So I'm the that people in my community found entertaining in like movies and, and television, I didn't find it entertaining because this is my real, real, real life. I don't find a New Jack City movie entertaining and seeing black women strung out on drugs and men strung out on drugs and people selling drugs when my uncle really selling drugs and police kicking in the door, taking my family members to jail, my mama really smoking dope, shooting heroin up her arm. That does not inspire me. That is not... It. It, it, that does not entice my mind. It, it doesn't stimulate me. But then when I see Goku and Vegeta and Trunks and and all these super beings <laughs> kicking ass and training and becoming great and and having all these beautiful women and all this and, and Gundam wings, gun, I look at a Gundam wing suit. It's like my Rolls Royces and my Maybachs and my and my my uh my Cybertruck. Shout out to Elon Musk. 
That's why I, I bought. seen that Cybertruck. You seen my right, Cybertruck? Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, his name is Megatron. He came <laughs> from Cybertron. You know what I'm saying? His, he's a Decepticon. Yeah. yeah. So like those things inspired me to be great, and uh, it was fun and and something to make in the hood when I used to have to fight and beat up my my hood, my my niggas and my, my like people that's from my area. So because they want to play 2K in the hood, in the, in the trap or in the house where we chilling at, they want to play NBA 2K, I want to play Dragon Ball Z or Naruto, <laughs> or uh, they want to watch Netflix or they want to watch Redbox DVD, and I want to watch uh, Cartoon Network Toonami on right now, they finna play Full Metal Alchemist. I want type Holy shit, you know what I'm saying? So like, and I used to like really argue with my partners over there. Like, or, or they'll try to make fun of me and make jokes for me because like they might be seeing the clips of a movie uh, like a good saying from a Friday movie or a good Mike Epps movie or uh, um, see what I'm saying? I get the saying uh uh when I think about the the actors from those movies like Cat Williams. Even I love Cat, but I'm just saying like I don't be knowing none of the, the, the like when they talk good Tupac movie Juice and they say a good Juice scene. I don't know that because I didn't fucking like that. Like, but I'm really living it though because it's fantasy to most people. It, it, thank you. Yeah, I get it. It's a Fantasy to you, of course you think it's cool. Yeah, I, you see me? I'm we <laughs> really going to trial. Like we're really doing this. You know what I'm saying it's not fun. It's not cool, and I'm not promoting it. You see yeah. me? It's just I said that's why I love to ooey and drip and rhyme and video games and, and fun. I, top before we move on topics, top video game of all time. I always say Halo Two. It's been the same age. Oh, yeah, yeah. So top video oh, game, Master Chief. Shout out to my nigga Master Chief. Uh, Halo 2 is a great one. The, the end of Halo 2, that's what make that game so good. The yeah. ending, that ending level, Man. driving on the, uh, that's the one, right? We drive yeah. on the Warthog and go over the, 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 yeah. the job! Yeah. The <laughs> job! <laughs> it was hard, bro. I, 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 I destroyed this. Yeah. Um, but but the, but I like the multiplayer. That's what I was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, that's what, that's all you little Call of Duty Kids and chumps and dead war zone. Halo, your daddy. It wouldn't be none of that if it 100%. wasn't for Halo full screen split. A hundred percent. That okay. was the best time. Oh God, it'll never be like that again. Man, best game of all time, bro. Is so hard because I'm a lover of so many genres of games and like sports games is like the end for me. So I would have to say I'm a I'm gonna just do two. I'm gonna just do two of the brackets that I love. I'm gonna do four. Or three. I, never, I'm do three. I never got into sports games. Yeah, me neither. Never. Me neither. Me neither. Besides the boxing fighting games, UFC like that. Okay. Best fighting game of all time. Best fighting game of all time. Okay, I'm gonna do one v one best fighting game of all time is Street Fighter, dude. The Tekken. Tekken, Tekken. Tekken is his best 1v1 fighting game of all time. Shout out to Wunan. Tekken. And I love all fighting games. And it's so, but what I'm saying 1v1, we saying Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, uh, 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 Final, uh, Final Fantasy, I mean, uh, Fight of Fury, whatever that, whatever the game that, oh, with yeah. T Terry Bogard, whatever game that Terry Bogard in, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, all of those games. Okay, then the best Story mode game, Devil May Cry. Devil oh. May Cry, Dante, Virgil, like, that's better than God of War. It's better than all the games. This is like that. Uh, uh, if I love I love Kingdom Hearts. I love Kingdom Hearts. I, I, you would kind of, I would kind of say between Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy Seas, those are the best RPG yeah, games. I but know. I hate RPG games that's not free form where you can – Play, you could choose between the two. I hate turn based. I don't want. I, I hate. I hate games to only be turn based. I want live action and give me an option to do turn based. But I would give those that. And then the best, like three D party game, like we use Marvel versus Capcom. One hundred percent. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Marvel versus Capcom is the best three v three. But honorable mention is like Power Stone from Dreamcast. Great honorable mention. Damn, you played Dreamcast. 
<laughs> yeah, like I'm a real gamer. Like I'm, I don't care what was going on oh in the, in the streets or on the south side of Houston, sipping, drinking, a DJ screw, chopping blades, like video games and so fighting, so warrior. Good. That's always been me. But like, yeah, they just inspired me to do other stuff, man. I just been different. That's what kind of like brought me <clears> into like doing um, these different products with different businesses that I've yeah. been working on, like. The, um, with my with my my partner right here, Ryan Kane, um, I got invested with him into this business called Achilles, um, for warriors of myself, like people that like martial arts, people that are uh, entertainers, rappers that perform a lot on stage and not do boring stage uh, sets, like actually dance or jump into the crowds, jumping off stage, doing backflips. You gotta get Chris Brown one of those. Chris Brown flips and that shit. type. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Football players, basketball players, boxers, it's just people who are exciting, b moving bodies that want to stay young. I want to stay young forever. I don't ever want to be uh, obese or like even that when I even on my fitness journey. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make sure that I stay a certain weight. Where when I get older, I can still manage my weight. And when I do get, take it serious, and as I get older, because I'm not gonna never get out of shape. But with the Achilles product, um. My, cause I had a brother that played football. So when this product was was given to me and it was it was brought to to the table, I was like, oh yeah, this make all the sense in the world. Cause my brother had uh, told his Achilles tendons in both of his legs. He was a running back. Uh, he told his Achilles tendons in both of his uh, uh, in both of his legs, and he also uh, fractured his calf. Mu I mean, he he ruptured his calf muscle, whatever that the tendon that's within the calf muscle. He tore that too, like. So he tore both of these in. He like had to on get, the sides? Yeah, like. Some of the perennials? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. He had to get some right here in his in the, uh, calf muscle. My brother got stitches in his calf muscle from the procedure, and both of his Achilles tendons, he got to, he got to get down. I, I never forget that. My brother was a running back. So, I and the rehabilitation time for both legs, and I remember this because I didn't play football, but I used to hear they say that when you do rehabilitate from a torn um, ACL, that's what he had. He had, oh. that's what he had. He had the Achilles and the ACL. But they said, oh, well, this is what yeah, it is right ACL, here. Yeah. But when you tell your ACL, they like, when it, when it heal, it be stronger than it was the first time that, than we, before you tore it. That's what they told my brother. He ended up getting back together. It took like a year and a half for him to get back together. He tore it again. Yeah, I heard it's, I thought it was never the same. Nah, it's one of those, one of them tennis, I don't know if it's the Achilles or the ACL, they say when when it heals, the comments gonna tell us, y'all tell us in the comments. One of those, when they heal, uh, it heals stronger. stronger than it was when you break it. So, but I just seen my brother be a victim of like, you know what I'm saying, tearing his muscles and shit. And, and then I, I know friends and rappers and stuff that like fall off stage, broke their legs performing, my friend Conway, shout out Conway, you know Conway the Machine, the West Side Gun, yeah. the Griselda. My brother Conway, he was shooting a music video. He jumped off a car and wrecked his, and, uh, broke his leg. Well, that device looks like what would typically people would use to recover would be like a like a big bin of rice. Put their foot in it and go like this. Yeah, but that's that that's what that reminds me. Let me of. grab this. Up. Yeah, grab it. <clears throat> Achilles, this right here is like weight. It's like the, the band resisted training yeah. that people do in the gym, but it's putting 20 bands in one small place. And you could and you could put two of these side by side and work your entire lower leg muscle all the way up to the other the upper inner thigh. And it cuts the downtime of rehabilitation like by weeks, by weeks. Half. You're like half. So you you probably be the a uh, uh, a football player. I'm assuming you could probably use it preemptively too. Like yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it's really for. It's prevention. Yeah. It's really for prevention. Like the best thing that, that when they was teaching me about it and like showing me everything that it does, I was like, oh yeah, that makes more sense than anything because why just only use it when it gets bad when you can use this and really focus on this muscle because that's the thing is the most important thing about this is range of motion. That's why you have you calisthenics versus hard lifting. Most people that do calisthenics and really good at calisthenics, they have a little bit more full body strength where they can do full muscle ups and full range of motion and it keeps them going much longer. But some of them don't have the same, uh, 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 what is it? The, the velocity, the, the push strength that a person that lifts weights. Yeah, same power. Yeah, yeah the, same, the same power. But this right here though, 
it's like focusing all of that energy into one space where you could be a power lifter but still get the benefits in your Achilles and your squatting area through doing this band resistant training, preventing yourself from having injury in the lower legs. And I think this is something that for me, because I'm really into boxing and like running and stuff like that. And like your lower, your leg, your power comes from your legs and boxing, your power comes from your ankles and and um having footwork, having the agility to yeah. maneuver and get out the way. Well, everything's from the floor up. It's sure. from the flow up. So, so why is the, a product like this not already one of the biggest things in the world? Why is this already not every in every gym in America? Or why every athlete like how did I never see this on the internet? That's what I felt when I seen it. Like, yeah, this is just like a no brainer. Like Yeah, I see. It. And then my partner told me the story about the original CEO, like the, the 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 person that created this device. He was a collegiate athlete, played football. He was supposed to go real, real far. He was doing very well, but he kept getting Achilles injuries. And um, he wanted to create something to where other athletes won't go through the experience that he went through and lose the opportunity to make it big. And um, yeah, I mean, he's a fucking, genius. Yeah, ankle and knee injuries or shoulders pretty much end anyone's career career right those are the worst things yeah so you know no that's cool it, it looks it looks dope I mean, obviously you stick your foot in it it has range yeah of motion yeah you around. stick your foot in it and then you do the whole range of motion and i was just thinking of it like yeah like it seemed easy but when you really just get into it and really get the pushing and shoving like you feel it like in, in parts of your leg that you know it's yeah. kind of like a person that do good forearm exercises with the those the um, ripper the rippers and yeah. the grippers and like it give you, a, it, it, I think this is like super dope, and I love the story from Greek mythology of Achilles. Yeah, Achilles. Yeah. yeah, like I know about, like you know, come on, we in this. So yeah, when I think of that, like this is the water to to go get you even stronger. This is like if she dropped him by his picky toes instead of just only by the Achilles. Man, that <laughs> she only would have held him by the toes instead of the Achilles. <laughs> Old Achilles, man. But yeah, now nah, this is a real dope product, man. I'm just happy to be a part of the marketing and a part of pushing this product and, you know, helping it convert over to the masses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's dope. So I, I saw I saw another interview clip um, where you said that if you were on a song with J. Cole Drake. I'm smacking and them. And Kendrick. No. I'm smacking all of Come them. On. I'm smacking them. I'm talking Come about on. destruction. You ain't never seen my freestyle from Just Incredible? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. What kind of hip hop do you like? I mean, that's a. T I like it all. I mean, I've. It, it really depends. Okay. It depends. Like, depends. Depends what I'm doing. What I right, listen to for sure. Right. Right. Okay. Well, whenever you have time, strap yourself up and take a deep dive through the sauce wormhole, man, of music, and you'll understand why. When I make those loud statements, it's never rejected. It's a reason that people critically acclaim me as one of the best lyricists to ever live, or especially the critically acclaimed is. Crazy. This is true. Yeah, hey, it's so funny. We talking about like from the we talking about the likes of Jay Z. Jay Z tried to um he put me on his uh best songs of the year list to two different years in a row, um two or three different years on a row. I I was Jay Z favorite songs of the year and every song that I, he's ever picked of mine has always been a lyrical song. It's never been a club banger. Yeah. So um Swiss beats, um like Kanye West, uh, the Dre's, like all the big, big, like Busta Rhymes, all the 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 people that are looked at as the pinnacles of lyricism and hip hop. These are the people that are going up on the internet and publicly, vocally saying Sauce Walker is the one. They saying and not me. Top five rappers in order. My top five rappers. You're not even gonna know them because they That's all fine. from Houston. They're uh, all from Houston? Damn near. But except for like two. Uh, my top five rappers is Lil Kiki from Houston. Lil Kiki. Second is Fat Pat from Houston. Third. Man. Okay, I thought somebody from New York in the um, third is like Busta Rhymes, like just as a person and a, like just as a as a character what and a time. A, what a time. Yeah, Busta like but wow. and Busta Busta Rhymes is like one of the first he I think he is the first rap video I ever seen in nineteen ninety three. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like, like bust around. I've always like love bust, and then I would say like for me, for my New York influences, like bust and Dipset. You can't pick a person out of Dipset. You guys like pick the group. Okay. So it's like Dipset, Buster. That's New York. Everybody else, the H. Uh, Lil Kiki, Fat Pat, J Dog. J Dog is a he like the pain rapper. J Dog is like a J Dog. He like a Houston Tupac type rapper, like a <clears throat> pain rapper. Struggle. Yeah. How, how real is the you know like the Houston? Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's a, not necessarily a control, but the J Prince, the Prince family thing is that like a like a barrier to entry? Bru- J Prince dead. J Prince, the family, they he dead. I'm a J Prince too though. Like, I'm a young J Prince. I'm a J Prince of the South Side. Like, of the South Side of the city. And this era, this era, this time, what J Prince did in his time and what he's accomplished, I'm doing that in the city and in the state of Texas right now. J Prince is definitely that though. He's that for sure. Like he's, that's he's really that. It's not a it's not a folklore. I know all the internet stuff going on because you know like. It's just crazy to see somebody at his age like get so involved and argue and go back and forth. People on the internet, but don't let the internet antics and stuff fool you, bro. Is really one of the most elite gentlemen and <laughs> figures that this this world has ever seen. And uh, you know, a lot of people have did it, but they ain't get away with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this guy, he, that he's and I, I, that's a business module that. Every I, I've 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 and I, it's an ongoing process, but I I accomplish the same same goals and same legacies that the Prince family and the father has established for himself in the state of Texas and Houston. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm a rapper too. So yeah, nah, bro, and I you know. So they're really like that. Jay yeah, Prince. Wow. The, Jay Prince Sr. When he got the on the father, internet, I was like, why the, is he, he related? That whole family, the, the family, but it's because of the father. It's like my, like when I'm, a, when my kids and my, like me and my brothers, like the original crew, me and my brothers, like what we've done, what we gonna do and what, what we already done and what we doing, it leaves a legacy for my kids. My kids gonna be there too. It's the same thing with him. His kids got to go and be everything that they wanted to be, but they had to go through the motions. Like that's, I like they, they, they went through the motions like, Houston gonna make you go through the motions to earn it. Like, and we ain't, Houston ain't gonna just give you nothing just because of your daddy. Like, you still gotta earn it. So, yeah. anything that anybody have in Houston, they earned it. It's, it's all earned. All respect is earned. And I got the same respect. I got the same power. I got the same. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I, I would never let nobody to think that it's just a game. Like, none of us is a game. It's really like that in Ace Time. All of us. But especially the families. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. just heard so much over the years. Yeah, I'm like wow. You know what I'm saying you, you, you know, we just we just meeting each other and getting in tune with each other. But you know, I created a family with me and my brothers on the south side of Houston. It's just as powerful and, and influential in the state of Texas as the Prince family. What do you do that is completely obviously the the anime kind of threw me off, which I love. But yeah, what do you do that's completely like left field that people wouldn't know about you? So like business stuff aside, like uh, rap stuff aside, like is there anything you do that people be like, what the, f-? like why are you doing that? Like surfing or some, sh-, you know what I'm saying? Like I would never expect you to be like out mm. surfing. Man, I I'm I do any I do not anything. Like, can I do you like, actually snowboard? Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I'm okay. I'm a person that could just do like down there anything. I'm a multi talented type of person. I'm just a. I'm athletic. I just do. I do anything. But to think of something that I do that people wouldn't know that I do, or think that I do that I like to do. Listen to. Um, I like to listen Don't to say like Taylor Swift, dude. No, <laughs> no, no. I like to listen to um, piano compositions. I like to. Oh li- wow! I like to listen to like symphonies and like piano compositions and stuff like this sometimes. But I like to have them like. Slow down though. I like I get like, I send them to like DJs and stuff like friends that I have and I have them like screw it up like I listen to music and you know it just feels where where do you boss see, and rich and and plush. Where do you see recently played? Where is that? I don't know. Is that a thing on here? 
I recently played yours, and then look, look. Yeah, 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 there, yeah, yeah. Look, bye, y'all. How yeah. real is that? That's yeah. yeah. I'm I'm one of those. I will play that right there, and have my DJ or my friends screw and chop it, like put the Houston sauce on it, and then ride in one of my super nice cars, and just smoke a big blunt and listen to classical classical music screwed and chopped though because it's just <laughs> it's just a deserving successful why feeling why is that so popular because it's just like slowed down it's like it's pulled out it's, it's um, just look i didn't it reminds me of the same re like i don't i'm not like a massive fan of it in uh -huh. the same way it's like i always i'm not being trying to be disrespectful to houston or texas yeah, no, no, the, the tire things the Entire swangers. thing, the swangers, the swangers, the chop. I'm, I don't get it. Love it. I don't get it. I love it. I love swangers more than the old school cars <laughs> that we <laughs> used to put them on. I, I just, love swangers. I I used to then like the only putting them on old school cars. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I it mean, sounds like that music was made like for people who are on lean. I ain't gonna it, lie. I was. That's what I was just finna tell you. Oh, okay. That's what I was just finna <laughs> say. Because that's it's what slowed. it's made for. Purple stuff is made for the syrup, the syrup, man, the 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 liquid DNA, the liquid blood flow of Texas and damn near the South and hip hop. You seeing, you will see Taylor Swift with a double cup in her hand before the red pickup cup or whatever some stupid ass cup's name. What's the, <laughs> the yeah, solo cups? The solo, solo yeah. whatever, yeah, solo cup. They solo now because everybody want a double cup. Yeah, <laughs> in all genres and styles of music, everybody wants to represent this Texas flavor because of. Justin Bieber, it activist for us, ruined the culture. But salute to Justin, that we with you, baby. But you, you us over act. Wait, Just, how, wait, how? When Justin Bieber got caught with uh, the serve with yeah. Lil Twist, they us. just blew the spot up. It blew the Fuck. spot up, and it's then crazy. they was wearing the activist clothes. You got all of these moms and Karens from Middle America. Price My went kids. up. Price went way up. Price went up. Yeah, they, they killed up. us. They, yeah, like yeah. So, wait, do you like Lean? What? No, like, cause it's such. A I'm a drink connoisseur. I I don't drink syrup as as much as I used to yeah. now, cause I'm getting older and I'm trying to be more healthy. But syrup lean is the first controlled substance that I ever consumed in my life. I've never drunk alcohol in my life because I'm from Houston, Texas. I've never been drunk. What? But that's how. But you see how you saying what? This I look at people that get drunk the same way as a person that looks at it, a person that sips lean. How the f do you get drunk? When you get drunk, I could beat you up. When you get drunk, you but lean, but it's lean, same thing. You no drink. Bull they nah, beat no, nah, you I wouldn't know you bull. That's a lie. Pills make you go to sleep. Lean don't do that. Lean make you nod off and feel real. It muscle relax you. You nod off and Whack. get comfortable. But no, no, <laughs> it's never. Smacked. No, no, no. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. I'm I'm doing that so the camera can see your body feel like this. But if anything happens to where your awareness is some. Oh, the, oh, you popping out of that lean high. It's not that strong. Oh, really? it's time to fight. Oh, robbery. Oh, shooting. Oh, anything like that. Or driving. You never seen a person that's incapacitated off sipping syrup and sipping lean have a drunk driving accident. There's no such thing as that. It's never been a person that sipped a pint of lean, drove from the bar, and it killed the innocent 13 year old car in a car with a mom. It doesn't happen. It's not that strong. And I don't care how much you drink of it, but I could drink two bottles of tequila and run into a school bus. It's not the same. So, what is it like? What is that? Oh, that's you. What What is it like? I'm actually curious. Um, I've never done it. Yeah. Yo, we stop, got stop. Yo. Sir, lean. But again, I, he goes. I got something to call. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I don't. I don't drink it as much as um. Like again, we don't drink it as much as we used to. We don't promote it. I, I actually have another product that um I created. I'm working on right now. I'm not gonna talk about it right now. We, we, but when they see this video, you know, we, you know, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, the first time that I tried lean or that was given to me, it was in 1999. I was nine years old. Wow. And um, we was on the way to New Orleans for my uncle's wedding, and I was riding with my older relative, my older cousin, is y'all, my cousin, my older cousin, uh. I was riding in the car when he drove me all the way down to to New Orleans, and as he as he drove me down, I was I used to rap as a kid. I've always loved hip hop, rap, and freestyling. And a part of Houston culture, it, like this is getting back to the, the 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 point of the conversation. Where you said what makes people love to drink? Okay, when you add the slowed up music right from DJ Screw 
Then you got the old school Cadillac car with the music bass beating in the trunk. And then you got these exaggerated rims poking out. That's the setting, okay? Now you got this slowed up music going. The music that we're listening to in Houston, you have hip hop, you got people that rap and write their lyrics. And they write every bar that they have. Houston is known for never writing a rap. We freestyle and off the come off the dome every single bar, every single every single song you ever heard from me, serious or freestyle, bull around the A-Town coach is always uh, off the dome. Actually, this man watched me record songs in ten minutes. I'm freestyling every. Ryan, shout out to STB Security what? Bag Records, TSF Business. Every song I record ever in life is freestyle off the dome, and that's another reason why I was telling you about earlier when you were saying, "Can I rap better than these other rappers?" This is why I know I'm at a whole different elite level because I have the skills, but I also have the talent. I have the gift. See, I have the gift like a, a, G, a, 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 a Giannis and a LeBron James. <laughs> I got the physical gift and the attributes and the speed and the jump, but I also know all the skills and the moves like Luka Dunnis and Tim Duncan and <laughs> Kyrie. I'm just, I have all of this. Shit. But back to the drink in the Houston is that freestyling is the centerpiece of our rap culture. So when you sip the syrup and you freestyle, for the songs that we're listening to first, those are freestyles that we're listening to from the rappers from Houston. And now inspire us to freestyle like them to imitate what we flatter by. We imitate yeah. what we listening to. So that's what's taught me how to rap so good. It's growing up as a kid, after the song's done playing and the DJ Screw, the DJ that we love, DJ Screw, yeah. that's our God, that's our Mac Dre, it's DJ Screw. He would sometimes just leave the beat playing screwed up. Or like, like the first way I heard, uh, it's a it's a hard knock life. Uh, uh, it's a hard life, life for for us. And then he'll bring it back, bring it back, and just keep playing that part of the beat. So now it's no lyrics, but it's just a good part of the beat that you like just playing over and over again. And now that's the part that we were freestyle to. So I was that young, over energetic kid that want to freestyle for five hours, six hours straight with my uncles and. Shit. And you know, it's entertaining and it's fun, but after a while, it's like, all right, this little nigga, this little motherfucker didn't shut up and go to sleep, man. God, chill out. With you know what I'm saying? So, my uh, my older uh, relative, he gave me, a, he pulled up a cup of syrup in a big sun kiss. He pulled up a three, a good, this was before activists. This is 1999. We was drinking bar or some shit. We was drinking <laughs> bar or uh, uh, Al Farmer, real purple dream before act. He pulled me up a, a full cup uh, in a um. I never forget it was in a uh the old school store, the, the old school green um. What was before Texaco? The old green store before Valero. The old green boy, green and white store. I forget the name of that yeah. old green and white Texas store before Valero. They don't even make them hoes no more. I forget, but anyway, the comments y'all know what it is. Give it to us in the comments, but. We went, he went to that gas station, got the got the big slushy cup. Cause you know, we really pull up in styrofoam cups, double cups. He did my first cup was sweating. Like your cup not supposed to sweat. Like you know how a cup perspirate the water outside yeah. of it? That's like wasting your lean or making your the, your lean watery. First time we sit, cause we trying to hurry up and get to my uncle's wedding in Louis in New Orleans and we kinda late. He didn't give me a double cup, so I didn't even have a proper cup. I had a uh, a slushy cup from from the all so maybe it was a seven I don't think it was a seven eleven but it was all green and white stuff but anyway pulled me up in the orange sun kiss gave me my first sip and orange. my life was changed it's like I went it's like I went through the Doctor Strange hole when when the the, the master sorcerer <laughs> sent her through the shit and Doctor Strange whoa <laughs> this sweet yeah man sir but um and I was a kid and all and all it did was make me. Laugh and freestyle a little stuff. Then I eventually went to sleep. <laughs> then I, I woke up in New Orleans. But I've seen as I grew up in life, and it started becoming like more accessible to me. That when I compared the two, cigarettes to weed, alcohol to drink, you know what I'm saying? Hard drugs? No, I'm not doing no pills. No, yeah. any hard drugs? That's not player. I'm from a city too. Houston is about being a player. Any hard drugs, pills, coke, any this. We supposed to be selling. If you doing, if we supposed to like sell to people that ain't us. You a dork, peon. We beating you up. You get robbed, uh, slapped. That's not right. Kids don't do that. All this yes. stuff we talk. We talking about where we come from and experiences to give you a documentary in the inside of the savagery of America. 
Yes, but yes. You can overcome these things and never have to see these things. And it's good. get in the gym. This is good. Yep. Like me and Brian, yep. and work on your physical physique and your dietary supplement plans and get you some bands. Yeah, that's good. This is a PSA. It was good. Yeah, but just speaking where I come from and what we experience in the musical industry, but alcohol is a drug too. And they said it in every store in the, in the world yeah, it's and it's accessible stuff, to everybody. Man. And there's a lot of families that give their kid and their son and their nephew and their daughter their first drink or their first boo, their first beer, yeah, you know, about they're 15 like, or 14 years that's old. That's true. So it's the same, same <laughs> just people put it in a different dynamic that gives it a different, you know what I'm saying, real, uh, uh, Ambience, so it gives yeah, it a different, different opinion. Yeah, uh, different stigma around. Yeah, it. different stigma, yeah. different stereotype, different stigma. Yeah. Excuse me, everybody. It's early in the morning right now. And I, I stayed up real late in the studio to come to do this interview. I'm a little discombobulated with my words. Speaking of Louisiana, yeah, did did Little Wayne get snubbed on the Super Bowl? Yes, but I still think they're going. I think they're going to put him on there on the performance anyway because why? Kendrick Lamar, Little Wayne is one of his favorite rappers, and you think he's going to pop out? For sure, I guarantee you. Like if they had this on pro, uh, if they had it on Kirgo bets, if I could bet on, Kier- <laughs> yeah, I love. You're funny. Oh. I'd bet on it too. But but there's that whole beef. I would there's, bet. There's that whole Drake beef, Jay Z, Drake Who beef. Who cares? The Wayne is at a point in, in his age and in, in life to where, bro, this is about the legacy and about the culture. Drake, I love you, but I ain't finna not go on stage. With this man, I mean, that's just, that's just, just because because at the end of the day, I'm pretty. I mean, I don't know their business, but at the end of the day, Drake is OVO right now. He's still not cash money like by the business standpoint. Young money, I'm he, I'm pretty sure Wayne is not currently getting paid, or he's not. You know what I mean? It's more of a like a salute and respect thing, and more like it's still actual business relationships. In my opinion, I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. Though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know. Like that's that was huge though. I I just think it's like his hometown. It's where he's from. It's yeah, like, yeah. I think if y'all did like at first, what I would have said prior is like, well, they don't have a history of always putting the big artists that's from that city at the Super Bowl. They don't always do that. But in recent years, or the year that matters, when the Rams had Super Bowl in L.A., y'all brought out was that fifty cent of Dr. Dre in there? That was Dr. Dre, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so 50, that, yeah. that's what makes it he not fair. 50, yeah. When you do that, that's what makes it not fair because at New Orleans to everything is about cultural balance in the world, especially with entertainment. Period. Yeah. No matter what race you are, no matter what cultural background you from, hometown spirit matters. For all of Caucasian white people in America, that's from Alabama, Kansas, Texas Longhorns, they're gonna go to town about their hometown spirit team that they love just as much as anything else it's yeah. their family same thing for us yeah. i love the texas longhorns i got the houston texas i never made a dollar off the of houston texans football team but it's tattooed on my skin i went through pain to represent it i got the houston rockets tattooed on me i don't own that shit. uh J- timmy fatita does yeah. you know what i'm saying but i love that I, I love the rockets that's my hometown spirit you ever see courtside all the time. Yeah. I'm going to sit the court side this year when the Rockets play against the Lakers when Bronny and LeBron is on the floor in the game. Or what, I'm going to some Lakers games on the floor this year, guaranteed. And I'm back at the Rockets chilling with all my good Rockets friends. Shout out Kiati, Jalen Green, uh, my the, the, uh, my boy Cook, uh, the, 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 uh, I mean Brooks, whatever his name is, my boy Center. From overseas, shooting threes, <laughs> ooh-wees. All my good boys over there. Yo, you're funny, bro. Yeah, that was they. they you know, I'm an entertainer. I'm a comedian on the side. <laughs> <laughs> on the, I only rap on the weekends. Stupid. Uh, oh, man. Is your diet good? It's left, left field question. My diet is great. I really only, uh, right now, I'm 80% Presbyterian, 90% okay. Presbyterian. I, I don't eat, I, I don't eat. I eat no red meat except for lamb. Lamb is my guilty pleasure. Like, Why do you avoid red meat? Because I'm not into a protein-based diet right now. And I also believe that I can't trust the red meat. Why? Because they have going on like 3D printed meat now. You think they're printing that? I don't think every meat is printed, but the fact that there's the ability to do so. Well, can't you just print meat. fish too, though? How the f- can you print? No. Same way you print red meat. Nah, what are you, you can't. Talking? No, you can't. 
you okay, listen, the, the textures and the certain things about aquatic food, shellfish, especially with Bro, you, I got money on the Kirigo bats. We, that you they talking are printing fish in hey, two years. You, you got imitation crab and you got imitation. It ain't coming in the shell. You can completely see that this is imitation. You can't even fake sell the imitation in a format that it looks like the real. With red meat, you can. With red meat, you can flip it, twist it, and switch it. And it, you think it, it real? Yeah, I'm scared. Uh, I'm scared. That's so much I'm scared to eat now. Then, and then I was a person that was enlightened and had a lot of knowledge. Mixture, and like you just said, you just met me, and you already said out your own mouth. You're very, very versed. You're versatile. Like, how do you do all this different? Shit? Okay, so I've always been knowledgeable. So it's like now with this even more awakening of knowledge and in, 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 in um understanding of cognitiveness amongst everybody, I'm really scared of this. Shit. Oh, it's the world so, insane, right? Yeah, it's insane. I'm scared. I don't want to eat. You know, McDonald's ain't make. I don't think the McDonald's we eating today is McDonald's as I grew up. And I just at a place where I got money and I'm doing well, and I want to look young forever. It ain't even just about thinking everything's fake or not right. It just I want to live longer, and I want I want my body to perform in a certain way. I want to always have a certain type of sex drive. I want to always be able to be able to fight. I want to always be able to perform, run, dress nice, wear any type of clothes that I want to wear go to the gym like i can go to the gym and work out with anybody nobody in the gym can make me throw up or quit like i've been working you seen my dad i could do it no you can't you see my daddy it. you just seen my daddy I, yeah but that's your this, dad that's not you You can't but you think you gonna make me just he ain't make me well, do you're it. referencing your dad is not in the room that we're training in. man my you know, brother you. my brother got more muscles let's than do you. it let's do it whenever you ready i'm ready i guarantee you i'm whatever the, what, the, i'll do it super tomorrow. super max i ain't gonna i don't not on the same weights but whatever the workout regimen is i will not quit throw up nothing and i'm gonna be still dancing playing sparring in between sets while everybody chilling in between sets i'm gonna be, nah. I'm gonna be shadow boxing i promise you i'm got, pulling tires I'm, nah i'm all right i got you on legs you're gonna yeah, I bro. love leg day. You're gonna, yeah, I don't skip bro. day. I, I'm one of them. One, I come from boxing. We don't skip leg day. Yeah, you're yeah. Yakking. I'm pressed with the mm, uh, we, <laughs> we sit, girl. We sit on the elevated thing. You uh, what, yeah. oh, is that a kettlebell? Yeah, kettlebell. Okay. Right here, yeah, yeah. Okay. What you talking about? Pick one. What? <laughs> what you want to do? Grab the X. Yeah. Huh? Huh? And then lunge. Huh? <laughs> and then got me what? Yeah. yeah, my brother, shout out Rizzo, Rizzo, TSF Business Fitness. Oh, my okay, God. Me. I can't wait. I love this. We'll to set that up. Oh, it's going to be great. We can stream yeah. it, too. Yeah. I promise we'll you. We'll do it live. We'll do, do it, it live. live. And it's, then you can't fake. It's fine. You can't, when we do it, you not, can't go, yo, edit that out? Oh, no, I don't need no get edit. You, I love my bloopers. Oh. We get, that's more money. Oh, I'm going to get Let's you, Let's laugh bro. and enjoy it together. When you know you him and you ain't them. I don't care about nobody seeing the bad times because when I come out on top, I'm on top. You still at bottom watching. I'm not watching you. That's the difference. When you know you're him and you're not them. When you know you're <laughs> yeah, him and you're not I love, them. I love it. Oui. Yo, thank you so thank much you for coming so out, much brother. For you're awesome, me, man. I love what you do for the culture, yeah. man. I'm thank you, man. Oui. Um, anything else? Like, I mean, obviously, th this. anything else you want to talk about? Shout out to Achilles. Shout out to TSF Business, my record label, my company that I yeah. own. I started from the ground up, the Sauce Factory. Um Go get all my products that I have, my sauce water uh, with exotic pop, uh, the, the Achilles leg product, uh, TSF clothing, uh, Potenza watercrafts, my boats, um, my vapes, uh, rap vapes. I have a, I have a, a, a vaporized company called Rap Vapes with like different rap artists and stuff. I just got a lot vaporized of Vaporized what though? Like yeah. vapes. Vape pen. Like it's a vape pen. But so it's like we do tobacco CBD. Or? We do okay. CBD and but tobacco first. Yeah. It's tobacco flavored first. But we also do CBD as well. My album um, Sauce Father Two is out right now um, on all platforms. Um, my my artist Peso Peso album is out right now on all platforms. Peso Peso. My Hispanic artist shout out to Mexican OT. My brother. Um, he was one of the people that also want he Mexican OT wanted me to see me and you work together. I love him. He's so, so yeah. Good. He like bro. I want to see you and Brian work together, bro. Y'all energy. Bradley, uh, Bradley, Bradley, yeah, Bradley, Bradley, good, Bradley, Bradley, Bradley. My bad, Bradley. Superman. But uh, yeah, he wants to see us work together. Yeah, so I'm glad I have. I we got you. Yo, you gotta send me send me some of the stuff you just mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I promise you, I am, I am, yeah. I am. Oi! Subscribe to the channel every Tuesday. I love you guys. See you. Oi.